Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for this community briefing on COVID-19 and our response efforts. Joining me again is interpreter Sharon Sinkler. And Sharon, it was great to see the story on you, about you on 1011 yesterday. It's been wonderful to have the work of our interpreters highlighted in the news. Um, you and Francis and Margie have made such a difference in helping us get out important health and safety messages to everyone in our community. Um, thank you as well to the media and to residents for tuning in. We want to also remind everyone to visit our website at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov where you can continue to find out the latest information about how to protect yourself, your family, and our community. Uh, for today's situation update, we want to report that we've had one new case of COVID-19 in Lincoln today. The total number of people in Lincoln with lab-confirmed cases of COVID-19 is now 63. The case, a man in his 40s, was found to be community-acquired. This is still under investigation. Uh, the case that was still under investigation yesterday, a man in his 30s, was also determined to be community acquired. That means that 45 of our city's 63 cases are considered community acquired. Here to provide more details on the investigations of the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department is Interim Health Director, Pat Lopez. Good afternoon. Um, as the mayor said, the new case today is a male in his 40s. He's self-isolating and his close contacts are self-quarantined. Four Lancaster County residents are hospitalized at this time and three of them are on ventilators. Nebraska now has 1,087 cases and 25 deaths. Again, one of those 25 deaths was in Lincoln last week. With the additional cases today, Lancaster County remains at a 3.2% positivity rate. That's the number of positive cases compared to the total number of tests completed. The state remains at about 8% and nationally we are near 20%. I wanted to again recognize our city's outstanding community response to the COVID-19 public health emergency. Overall, our residents have been exemplary in doing what has been asked of them. We all want to move beyond this pandemic and have a sense of normalcy. It's a bit too soon to know exactly what measures will need to be in place moving forward, but we are listening to what is going on across the country. We are also communicating with the governor's office to coordinate guidance, and we have daily communications with other health departments from across the state and with our community partners, so that in the end, we make decisions in accordance with the mayor's office and to do what is best for Lincoln. We also know that we all need to be <clears throat> collectively continue to make a difference and to reduce the impact of the virus. Testing is an important part of our efforts, and we again urge all those who have symptoms of COVID-19 to access the drive-through testing sites provided by Bryan Health and CHI St. Elizabeth. Despite the spring snowstorm, we did see a good increase in tests yesterday, with 93%, 93 people being tested. Again, these sites have the capacity to do 150 tests, so that's just uh, still just 62% that we completed yesterday. I want to urge you if you have COVID-19 symptoms, uh, fever, cough, we urge you to get tested today. All you need to do is fill out a simple online questionnaire at chihealth.com or bryanhealth.com. If testing is recommended, you will be given an order and referred to one of the drive through testing sites. The drive through sites will accept those who have received orders and referrals from Brian Health or CHI Health, St. Elizabeth. <coughs> Elizabeth. It will also accept uh, those who have an order from their physician. If you need help accessing a health care provider, you can call the health department at 402-441-8006. Thank you. I just want to join Director Lopez in commending our community for following the health department's recommendations on preventing the spread of COVID-19. 
Uh, we have been working, of course, um, since the beginning of this pandemic to try and disseminate far and wide their guidelines and recommendations about how to protect yourself and others. Staying home, practicing physical distancing, washing your hands frequently and thoroughly, and wearing cloth face coverings in public, along with self-isolating or self-quarantining when necessary. Um, wearing cloth face coverings, of course, is a more recent health department recommendation. It's wonderful to see that so many people are taking this recommendation to heart and are wearing them out in public places where other people are present and in work settings. And right now, although we only have a handful of people in this room, um, they are wearing face coverings. And uh, this is mine. I just took it off before we started the briefing so that you could hear me more clearly. But once this briefing is over, I will put it back on as I head back to my office. A couple of reminders that we want to bring up related to cloth face coverings. First, these face coverings are recommended in addition to other preventative measures that we have been sharing. They are not a substitute for those other precautionary steps that we all should be taking right now. Second, please refrain from using healthcare worker masks, such as N95 or surgical masks, unless you're specifically advised to do so by a medical provider. It's really essential that surgical and N95 masks are reserved for those in our, uh, who are working on the front lines, our healthcare workers, and our first responders. If, if people have questions about face coverings, there is a lot of information available out there um, about how to use them, about where to use them, about how to care for them and wash them. And you can find that, this kind of information on the city's website. Again, that's covid19.lincoln.ne.gov under the How to Help tab. You'll even find some great options for making your own face coverings. And we have had so many great stories of volunteers in our community who've stepped up and helped create face coverings and donated them to their friends or families. Uh, others have coordinated volunteer groups to make larger quantities of face coverings and have donated them to our first responders our, and our healthcare workers. I wanna thank all of them for taking the time to be a part of this community-wide effort. And I personally want to thank a few individuals, Nancy hove Grawl, Jackie Allen, Alexa Burmeister, and Sarah Holmes, each of whom has lovingly crafted and donated masks to my family and to our team here at City Hall. Uh, moving on to a quick update on city operations. The city's traffic management center has suspended operations for the winter weather event that we experienced yesterday. Snowfall reports across the community ranged from four to seven inches, which means that was our singest, single biggest snowfall event of the season. And so let's just hope that April snow showers lead to May flowers this year. And as the snow has melted, driving conditions have improved throughout the day. Uh, what were slushy streets this morning should dry nicely by the end of today, given that pavement temperatures are rising on their way to an anticipated high of 75 degrees. Now let's just hope the air temperatures follow suit. Um, today's briefing is going to be a little different than usual. Um, following on the heels of this morning's interfaith prayer breakfast, uh, and as we head into another weekend under the cloud of the pandemic, we invited some special guests to speak this afternoon. These guests will provide us with some inspiration during these difficult days. We will all also offer some food for thought as we seek to connect with our families and our friends and our community at this time of, of physical distancing. The Faith Coalition of Lancaster County did a masterful job of connecting this morning with the first ever virtual Mayor's Interfaith Prayer Breakfast. The topic, building a compassionate community, could not come, have come at a more appropriate moment. I am deeply grateful to the Faith Coalition, to the Mayor's Interfaith Prayer Breakfast Committee, and to Service Space for ensuring that this event could carry on despite the distance physically between us. For those who weren't able to participate live, I encourage you to watch the recording on LNK TV through cable television, our city website, YouTube, and Facebook. You'll find the channel numbers and links at, at lincoln.ne.gov. The breakfast's guest speaker, uh, Nipun Mehta, spoke powerfully about the impulse to generosity that we all have and how we can create systems and technology to amplify the impulse and build community around giving and compassion. 
And as I mentioned in my remarks this morning, we are in the midst of a great defining challenge as a community. Lives and livelihoods are at stake. People are struggling, many in ways they've never struggled before, and in many ways that are not visible to the rest of us. We have become keenly aware of the fragility of our jobs, our economy, our food supply, and our health. There's only one other time in my life, personally, where I felt anything even close to this. And when I was pregnant with my first child and living out in San Francisco at the time, an earthquake struck. And the concrete beneath my feet, uh, which had always seemed so solid and permanent, suddenly quivered like a liquid. In that moment, which really only lasted probably a handful of seconds, I was awakened to a new reality that the earth beneath my feet, that I had trusted as my foundation, uh, and the life in my belly that represented my hope for the future, were fragile in ways that I had never even contemplated. And I feel that again now, um, more profoundly than ever. Yet I also feel, and maybe you do too, that there is an opportunity in the midst of this challenge, an opportunity to transform ourselves and our community for the better. In time, we could come to view this period as the source of our collective renewal, the point, the, sorry, the pain before our rebirth as a community. Love and compassion are the key to this renewal. As humans, we have enormous wells of love and compassion within us, but sometimes we forget how deep those wells truly are. Moments like this offer us a chance to draw upon those wells and to remind us of our capacity for love and to how to serve others. We have witnessed an extraordinary outpouring of love and compassion in our community over these past few weeks. There were the musicians who put on folk music concerts outside senior living centers, the teachers at SCO Middle School who made a video telling their students how much they missed them, the tattoo parlor that donated 50,000 gloves to our health department and to hospitals, the people who cheered on the newlyweds by honking their car horns and collectively celebrating from a safe distance, or the volunteers who created and collected toys and arts and crafts for the children at St. Monica's. We are seeing countless instances of love and compassion and service here in Lincoln. Father Justin Fulton, Executive Director of Catholic Social Services of Southern Nebraska, is here to speak to this outpouring of compassion in the community and what, his, and what this means for us going further. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Father Fulton. Thank you both very much, Mayor. And on behalf of the citizens of Lincoln, uh, the faith community and nonprofits throughout Lincoln, thank you for your strong, steadfast, and capable leadership for all of us. Uh, we're looking to you for leadership and you've you're, you're a shining star in our state and in our country, and we thank you for that. I want to thank the citizens of Lincoln uh, and the news media for reporting the good news that's happening out there. And I want to thank the citizens out there for pouring out their love and compassion already during this pandemic. I want to share with you just a quick story that happened to me personally last Saturday, um, right down the street from where I live in near South. I was doing a socially distant uh, visit to a couple of good friends of mine, uh, and we were hanging out in the backyard. Uh, just lounging around in some chairs. And my two friends have a five-year-old daughter named Jacqueline. And the little five-year-old daughter, Jacqueline, said, hey, Father Fulton, will you plug your ears? And so beholden to the will of a five-year-old, I went ahead and did so. I plugged my ears like this, and Jacqueline went to her parents and asked them a question. They gave her permission to go ahead and do what she wanted to do. So Jacqueline went back inside, brought out her piggy bank, and presented me with a shiny quarter. And she said, Father Fulton, I want that quarter uh, to go to someone who really needs it. And frankly, I was speechless. And obviously, a Catholic priest can't have his own children or have his own family. I wanted to cry. And I just wanted to say thank you to Jacqueline at that moment. But I'm going to take this moment to say thank you to that little five-year-old. Jacqueline, you're a leader in this city already. You are showing the city of Lincoln how to love one another and how to bring about unity. You gave that quarter to someone, me, and we are giving it to someone who you'll never meet, probably. And that is the definition of love, sacrificing and caring for someone that you probably will never meet in your life. And so, Jacqueline, thank you for being a leader in this city, and thank you for your love of humanity. 
you know, I think in a time of suffering, uh, anxiety and strife, especially during this pandemic, leaders are called to the forefront. And frankly, Lincoln is filled with leaders. Each and every one of us is a leader. And now is the time for all of us to put away partisanship and political divide and look for unity and bring about more compassion and more love. Uh, I think when we give of ourselves like little Jacqueline did, we actually find ourselves happier. We find out that as human beings, we were made out of love and we were built for love and we were built for compassion and to share compassion and love with one another. I already dream of a day that's coming sometime in the future. Uh, the image of Memorial Stadium being filled with 90,000 people again and everybody participating in a wave. We know what the wave is. It brings about smiles to everybody in that stadium, but there's one rule about the wave, that when you receive motion, you have to give it to someone else. And so section by section, people get up, they holler, and then they smile. It's the same way with compassion and love. Receive love, give it. The old reaching out to the young, the young reaching out to the old, all of us reaching out to one another. Be the source of love in this time of this pandemic. And when you give love, you find out that you are happier and that your mind, your body, and your soul is in line and that we're all created for happiness and love. You know, the suffering has brought about more compassion into the world. A month ago, there wasn't a mu as much compassion and unity and love in this world. And because of this pandemic, we see more compassion and more love coming into it. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Lincoln, for spilling love out into the world and unleashing love and I encourage you to do so. And again, we do believe that love is the most powerful force in the universe. It makes people do amazing things. And I'm looking forward to standing shoulder and shoulder with the mayor at a reasonably safe distance <laughs> and every citizen in Lincoln uh, to see what love will do for this city. Thank you for reaching out to us and thank you for your leadership and your staff's leadership as well, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you're doing and what Catholic Social Services is doing to spread love and compassion throughout our community. And please thank Jacqueline for me. I hope that it's someday not too far from now I can meet her and stand shoulder to shoulder with her and tell her my gratitude for her leadership personally. Um, as Father Fulton indicated, the bonds and bridges that we form with one another represent another key to our renewal. When Alexis de Tocqueville visited the United States in the 1830s, he was struck by how closely uh, connected people in the U.S. were, as they were forever forming associations as of all types. And he attributed the United States' success as a democracy to the strength of its social ties. Research has, of course, since affirmed the importance of social connectedness to a community's success and resilience. Unfortunately, as Robert Putnam famously documented in his book, Bowling Alone, the United States has experienced a significant decline in social connectedness since the 1970s. We see that decline in civic participation, declining volunteerism, declining participation in social activities, and declining trust in one another. As strange as it may seem, despite the physical distancing, or perhaps even because of it, we are starting to witness a social rebirth. We're seeing a greater amount of volunteering, a great amount of communication among families and neighbors, and a greater reliance on networks of friends, businesses, and associations. Once superficial calls and texts have now become full of depth and meaning, this is our opportunity to reverse a trend towards isolation and to create a social stimulus alongside our economic stimulus. At the end of the day, the best support that people can find is in each other. It is our role in the government to support the community in rediscovering its true source of strength, our people. Jason Varga, Executive Director of Cause Collective, joins us today to speak to the important role that compassion and strong relationships play from the perspective of our nonprofit sector. And with that, Jason, I invite you to share some remarks with our community. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate you having me here. Um, it, it, uh, Father Fulton, that was wonderful. Uh, thanks for making me follow such a speaker, by the way. Uh, and Compassion is truly on full display right now with our nonprofits and the work that they're doing to support the community. 
I'm especially proud of the Lincoln nonprofits right now. They have become more collaborative and innovative at a pace that I wouldn't have thought possible two months ago. Many of them have efficiently shifted their services to respond to their clients' emerging needs. Uh, and as a good example, we just heard a story from Child Advocacy Center about a new Lincoln family that came in from another state. This family who had just relocated to Lincoln in the middle of the pandemic, sadly had lost one of their children due to a medical issue. And of course our hearts go out to that family. The family did find their way to Child Advocacy Center and they did what they do best by providing support to the siblings. And when the staff realized they were struggling financially to pay for the funeral, they took it upon themselves to go above and beyond their regular service and raise money from the Lincoln community. And in just a few days, that family could pay for their funeral and other related expenses. And even amidst all their pain uh, in this hard time, the family uh, told the Advocacy Center, we can never thank you enough for the kindness of your staff and all those who helped us in a time of great need. But I know one day when we are able, we will return the blessing. This is also a great example that emphasizes the importance of having a strong social fabric and robust civil society, which is always important, but never more apparent than now. In fact, this very concept was built into the Cause Collective logo, which represents several threads that are woven together because the nonprofit community in Lincoln knows we are stronger as a woven fabric than any single thread. People who are connected to organizations and other supports are more likely to do well and those who are not connected to any social network or organization will have a more challenging time getting the support they need and less likely to bounce back. So please, if you feel you need that support, do not hesitate to reach out and ask for help. And if you know someone that uh, you think needs support, hesitate to ask if they need help because this depth matters. The nonprofits who have the deepest relationships with their clients they serve are going to have more success. And as the mayor and Father Fulton mentioned, there has been an outpouring of love and compassion in the community, which has translated into a desire to serve in whatever way one can. There are some new nonprofit volunteering opportunities now, and there will be many more available when we're able to come together again. So if you would like and you're able to help, two of our nonprofit members at Cause Collective can help you find a place to volunteer. One is Nebraska Volunteers, and two is the Center for Civic Engagement's Give Pulse platform. You can find links to both of these on the web page, uh, of the city's web page that the mayor mentioned, and then click on how to help. If you do find one that speaks to you, we just ask that you please contact the nonprofit first as they may have uh, many needs going on at the same time and they wanna respect the health directives as well. So thank you, Lincoln. Thank you for your support of Lincoln's nonprofit community. Jason, thank you so much for leadership in the nonprofit sector and, of course, for your service on the Lincoln COVID-19 Response Fund Committee. It's just incredible the work that you're doing to get resources rapidly deployed to our nonprofits so that they can meet the basic needs of people who are struggling in our community at this time. Um, and again, the links to the volunteering opportunities that Jason Varga mentioned are posted on our website at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. In addition to those opportunities, uh, one way in which we here at City Hall are trying to support greater social connectedness is by pairing individuals who are homebound who are, and who are seeking additional support, whether that's physical support like running errands or the support of a friend. We're linking them with healthy volunteers in the community. And this program called Neighbor Link will be launched next week. Our goal is to, for the individuals in this program to form long-term meaningful relationships that exceed the bounds of this COVID-19 pandemic. Finally, I am delighted to have here today Preta Bonsal. She is going to speak on the topic of building a compassionate community. Preta is a nationally known public servant and constitutional lawyer who served in the catbird seat for the federal government's response to our last national crisis, the 2008-2009 financial crisis, when she was a senior advisor in the White House. Now, we are fortunate that she has returned to her hometown of Lincoln, where she is working to strengthen our spirit of democracy and resilience from the ground up and from the heartland out. As part of her work with the MIT Media Lab, Preeta's focus is on how we empower human networks and community relationships. She is a committed volunteer in the global volunteer ecosystem known as Service Space, which is rooted in small collective acts of compassion, generosity, 
and service to ignite shifts in communities and in our social, economic, and governance systems. And I might say that she is quite a personal inspiration to me. Prita, I'd love to hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, and thank you for your steady hand amid this crisis. Um, as someone who dealt professionally in crisis management my entire career, um, for governments as well as corporations, I know how it's the intangible qualities and of internal resolve and strength that get us through. And you're just exhibiting that and embodying that every single day in your leadership of the city. So we're just so grateful. Um, I'm also really grateful to be here and humbled to be here with Father Fulton and Jason Varga, um, who have been so instrumental in the nonprofit sector's response to this crisis. Um, as someone, uh, as, as the mayor mentioned, who spent a lot of my life in major institutions and in government and business and academia, as well as the nonprofit world, I just wanna reiterate the message that I hope came shining through at this morning's prayer breakfast, that our community's transformation ultimately will rely not just on, or even mainly on the response of our traditional institutions, but ultimately it's a call to action for each and every one of us as individual members and citizens of this community. And Jacqueline, um, <laughs> what, a, what a shining example you've been for each of us. Uh, so I, I really think that what can be birthed from this crisis is unbound given the limitless capacity of the human spirit. So just, um, you know, I was thinking just a mere few weeks ago, it just, it was unimaginable that the entire planet could come completely to its knees and be held up in this vast worldwide way through this tiny molecular pathogen. I mean, who could have imagined that uh, every, everything would come to a halt the way it has? But in the same way, just a few decades ago, it was absolutely unimaginable that a single person in a single, creating a single program coming out of a dorm room, which has now become Facebook, could completely alter the way people interact with one another, receive their news, or interact with their systems of government. And a few centuries ago, it was unimaginable that a fledgling group of colonies could break away from the largest empire in, on, on the planet. And I think that just a few decades from now, it will seem inevitable what now seems perhaps unimaginable, that just simple acts of kindness and compassion, like those exhibited by Jacqueline, can alter our systems of government, markets, and nonprofit sectors. You know, we often think these are nice, these are important acts, and we should do them um, because they're, they're part of who we are. But I don't think we realize that that is the stuff from which true lasting change comes from. And as Father Fulton said, the, the power of love, even a single drop of it, is so powerful. Um, and it's, you know, this is not just nice stuff and kind of beside the point of like true social change. As the mayor said, the true stimulus is not the economic stimulus of the federal government and the philanthropic community, but it's the social and spiritual stimulus of these times. We're truly at an inflection point in history made possible by the vast outpouring of the human spirit. And one of the things I've been kind of reflecting on is during this pandemic, I'm thinking there's really three factors that I've learned at least as a non-biologist that seem to uh, determine its spread. One is kind of how connected, how, how physically and externally connected we're, uh, we are with one another, which is why we're seeing the social distancing to kind of control that factor. The other is our internal immunity. So um, we're all trying to do whatever we can to boost our internal immunity. Um, and then the third is what they're calling the contagious factor of the pathogen known as the basic reproductive ratio or r not. Um, and, you know, for whatever reason, this coronavirus has a very uh, low, or I can't remember which way it goes, high or low, or not, which means that, the, you know, the, the more that the contagious the disease is, the faster it will spread in the community. So I've been involved for like the last six years or so now in this global volunteer movement that's making Compassion Viral. Um, we're kind of looking at the ways in which networks and, you know, viral spreads happen in other realms and trying to really make this the, the enduring viral spread of our times. It's been going on for 20 years now. And we heard this morning at the prayer breakfast from the founder of that movement called Service Space. Um, and we're really using all of these three factors that I talked about, which, which we're now learning about with, with uh, viruses. Um, we've been using that for 20 years to try and build uh, networks of compassion. So the first thing is we're using basic technology and network science 
to boost our external connectedness with each other. So um, building those social connections. Um, second is we're providing safe spaces of deep listening to ourselves and others that allow us to boost our heart immunity and break down the internal resistance to that. And the third is that we're building the basic reproductive ratio or the r naught of the virtues, um, not just of the vices and not just of pathogens. And we're doing that by supporting people to deepen and uncover their wells of compassion and to do that in community with others. So while continuing to work with our city, our private sector and our philanthropic and nonprofit community this crisis, I'm really, really excited to be part of this um, effort to support and harness direct mutual aid or peer-to-peer -peer human spirit that we're seeing outward in this during these times. So that that becomes, so that compassion becomes a lasting force for change even after this crisis subsides. As we heard this morning, the Sanskrit word for compassion is called karuna. So we're calling it coronavirus, not coronavirus. <laughs> um, so just really happy to be here and excited that uh, to be working with such outstanding leaders in our city to make this happen. Thank you so much, Frida. We're so lucky to have you back in Lincoln and we're grateful for your service in so many, on so many fronts through service space, through the Lincoln COVID-19 Response Fund Committee, the Community Health Endowment, the Lincoln Community Foundation, the Faith Coalition of Lancaster County, the Board of Nelnet, and so many other community contrib contributions that you make. Thank you so much. Um, as, as all our speakers have really suggested, you know, how we navigate this critical time will really determine whether our story is one of fragility and reversion to the status quo or one of resilience and transformation. And when we draw on our deep wells of love and compassion, and when we strengthen our bonds and our bridges as a community, uh, we ensure that Lincoln's story is one of resilience and transformation fueled by love and compassion. In that spirit, I would like to invite all of you to share your stories of the love, compassion, and service that you are experiencing during this time by emailing your story to mayor at lincoln.ne.gov. We would love to collect and share those stories and help make them part of the coronavirus contagion uh, as part of our dashboard of hope as we move forward during this time. And with that, I thank you for tuning in and ask if there are any questions from the folks who are here from the media. And, and Director Lopez is still here, by the way. Riley from the Journal Star with a question for the director. All right. Thanks, Riley. Thanks, Mayor. Good afternoon, Riley. Good afternoon, Director. I uh, just had a question about um, the test results that come back. So the numbers have been, you know, one, three, two of positive results. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm wondering, is, is the health department seeing the number of total results reported, including negative and positive? Um, is that growing as testing capacity grows? Or can you speak to um, sort of that trend line. I, I, I know we haven't broken out exactly how many negatives are um, per day are being returned, but the total is there. But I guess I was just curious from your perspective, it, is the city seeing uh, the number of returns coming back in greater number? Yeah. Yes, yes we're in a greater number of returns. So when we tell you the number of tests done in a day. So if there's 90 tests done in a day, and then usually within 48 hours, uh, we'll have an idea, we'll have results uh, back from those tests and, the, and we'll have the negative numbers. So we're getting negative numbers every day and then the tests that are positive. So overall now, uh, we've had uh, 19, 72 negative tests and then if you add on our positive cases that gives you the total number of tests that have been done in the community at this point but remembering that we get the test results we know who's going in to the public health lab so that would be like the eight pending we talked about today but we don't know how many have gone into the other outside labs but we do get the test results back from the outside labs. We just don't know how many are pending at any given time. And 
follow-up to that, that we've had such a steady and lower than the state average um, rate of positive results. It, is that indicative of maybe more precautionary testing for possible exposures among um, uh, people in those initial priority groups of um, public safety uh, personnel or healthcare workers? I, I mean, or or is it or is it a combination of that and um, social distancing? I think uh, probably a combination of things, but most importantly, what we've seen is the social distancing impact in our community. And we know that's one of the, uh, all, all over in our country has said that the social distancing is really one of the key factors in preventing the spread of the disease. And I think Lincoln early on took action and the fact that our community, um, as we've talked about and we've heard so eloquently um, this afternoon in very moving ways, is a very caring, loving community. And they want to do the right thing. And they are um, with the social distancing. We also know that with those restrictions that now we have more testing available, we really want people to get in and get testing because that's going to help us as we move forward and make decisions. Okay. okay. The question um, from Callum at Camp uh, War is Have you seen the number of cases reported at places like Smithfield and Lincoln Cold Storage? Lincoln Cold Storage, uh, I'm not aware of anything happening uh, there. Um, we do know that there's some activity in Smithfield, close to here, that's under investigation right now. And I think we've all seen the large number of cases that are being reported in Grand Island. Those cases increased um, 61 overnight. Are there any other questions from the media? Maybe you can do one for Riley. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, on the last comment by the director Lopez, so so are there any confirmed cases at the Smithfield plant? We'll come right back. Thanks. Well, I think at the current time that's under investigation, Riley, and I believe that um, they're working towards uh, seeing if that was a member of that community that was working there. So I, I think probably tomorrow we'll have more information available. Sure, and a, and a follow up to that. Um, have, has Lincoln or Lancaster County had any sort of cluster of cases, um, you know, at workplaces or um, other gathering sites outside of maybe individual families where several family members have contracted the virus? Have, have we identified any problem of any clustering or is that kind of what contributes to the lower numbers that we've had? Well, it only contributes. Uh, we haven't had any clustering at work sites. Uh, we're looking at right now in, in one small area uh, where members may have been together um, that we may have a small number of a, a small cluster of in, individuals that are still related to each other. but we really haven't seen any. I mean, just obviously we wanna be doing more testing. It's one of the reasons why all week we've been encouraging people to get tested. When we first began this process of testing, we didn't have enough tests and they were prioritized for certain people who are in high risk groups. Now that our testing capacity has increased, we absolutely want more people to get tested so that we can get a better handle on the prevalence of COVID-19 in our community and of course get people the treatment and care that they need. Um, we expect these numbers will continue to climb, but like Director Lopez said, it is a credit to our community and the social distancing practices that they've undertaken that those numbers have sort of been trickling in um, over the last few days. Any other questions from the media? 
All right, well, I just want to, again, thank our participants, Father Fulton and Jason Varga and Preta Bonsal for being here today to provide really wonderful insights and stories and, and inspiration for us all. Thank you so much, everyone out there. Please stay well and stay home.